Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we're honored to be joined by Martha Silva, co-executive director of Conexión Americas. How are you doing? Very good. Happy to be here. Thank you for this invitation. Absolutely. You all do so much good. We have a lot of ground to cover, especially in terms of the number of your programs. But let's start with a little bit of history. Give us some background for the organization. Yes, absolutely. We uh, started in 2002 um, out of the need, of course, of the growing Latino population here in Nashville and in Middle Tennessee. We started then understanding that our Latino community was growing and therefore there were a lot of opportunities and challenges that they were facing. There was the need at the time, it still is the need, of course, to have programs that assist our Latino families to progress, to fulfill that dream of the American dream, as well as contributing to this uh, city that is, is hosting them. And of course, they are residents of the city as a immigrants or as a first, third generation, of course, of Nashvilleans that are, have, are coming from our Latino background. Before we dive into all of the education and entrepreneurship and so much more, Give us an idea when you talk about numbers and the cultural diversity, when you say Latino, obviously even different countries and backgrounds, give us an idea of some of the numbers and the cultures that all play a role in what you do. Yes, uh, Conexión Americas is a Latino nonprofit. We um, specialize in serving the Latino population, but of course we also keep our eye very closely to the immigrant community because we have a lot of allies that work closely with us to serve those new arrivals, those communities that are not, that are coming into town. When we think about uh, numbers, of course, the latest census provided that our Latino community is close to 14% in the state. So that gives us, of course, a, a very no accurate idea of how big this community is. This is a number that we understand for those that counted, for those that actually participated in the census. But if we think about the the number of people that didn't join the, the study, we are talking about a bigger, bigger community than just the 14%. So when we think about Nashville Metro Schools, when we understand that Southeast Nashville Metro Schools had a huge population of um, Latino or immigrant kids, when we talk about the number of languages that are spoken right now at Metro Schools, that gives an idea, of course, that this is something that we as a, as a Nashvilleans, as an Americans, need to put attention on that growth because definitely there are a lot of there is a lot of youth that needs to be guided, that needs to be welcomed, that needs to be supported, as well as their parents that are entrepreneurs, that are driven to fulfill jobs and opportunities in this country. So that's that's why Connection Americas is in place, along with many other nonprofits and organizations that care about this. Absolutely. Well, let's dive into all you do, because as I mentioned, you do a lot. And so let's start on the education side. When you talk about English and literacy success in school, success in college, talk about the education component for what you do. Yes, well, definitely. Thank you for, for that opportunity to showcase the work of Conexión Americas that have been in place for the past 20 years. We have, as you say, we do a lot. It's, it's kind of hard to answer that question because it's not like many other nonprofits like, yeah, we do this. Well, we, Conexion Americas, have four main pillars. So one is the education when we have um, staff members and programming from middle school to college. So basically we hand hold the hands of our youth, Latino and immigrant youth, because one, that's one of the programs that is very diverse with other um, immigrant youth that don't necessarily are Latino background. And basically what it is, is through after programming, after school programming, we make sure that they continue 
with their education. We we support them throughout the challenges and opportunities that the school is providing. And then hopefully we navigate all those systems to make sure that our kids continue higher education, whatever higher education means for them, whether because of their financial situation or interests or talents, this can be um, a college degree, this can be a secondary degree, and most recently it could be macro enterprise. Because if anything of the lessons that we learned during the pandemic is that our kids are also looking into other opportunities beyond college, and that's when we need to actually pivot into those um, in that interest and navigate that with them. So that's the education program. Within that program, we have parents engagement, which basically is supporting our parents, our Latino immigrant parents, to understand the school system, to be better advocates for their kids, as well as, as silly as it sounds, improve our parenting skills, right? Nobody was born with the parenting book under the arm. So obviously we all need to learn better practices on how to raise our kids, how to talk, have challenging conversations, et cetera. The second pillar is macro enterprise, as you mentioned. That one is, uh, we have a course that uh, navigates potential or current entrepreneurs into what it means to have a business. So we teach basic mm, best practices, accounting, marketing, um, how to register your business, as well as coaching for best practices to start or grow their business. Under that umbrella, we have a a very well-known and hope well-known commercial kitchen that is called Mesa Comal, which is a culinary incubation kitchen fully equipped when we welcome food entrepreneurs to start their business without the front costs of having their own kitchen. Uh, with that, we recently last year opened our first retail store in partnership with Belmont and Sodexo, which is called Mesa Comal Cafe which is in partnership with Belmont University, is on Belmont Boulevard. And I hope everybody can stop by and support us by eating delicious local um, entrepreneur food. Right now we have Indian food, but of course the goal is to rotate chefs um, uh, annually. So hopefully everybody can have a taste of what the international flavors are in the city. So we also have the advocacy. So that's the other pillar, right? Um, then the advocacy, we of course advocate for um, anti against anti-immigrant uh, laws, anti-inclusion and equality laws and efforts. We, we believe uh, that we, a welcoming city is a welcoming place where we all should drive and, and, and provide to each other as a, as a community. So we have that advocacy. And um, within the macro enterprise and economic, we do tax preparation, we do financial, financial literacy, education for free for our Latino families. And we also, I might be pitted, in, pitted into another level, which is we created Casa as a Friend, which is a community center in Southeast Nashville that hosts other nonprofits as a one-stop place for social services. Yeah, that's good because you, you already painted the picture. And as I mentioned at the onset, you do a lot, which is awesome. And I was going to shift over and talk about the events. And when you talk about using your facility and cultural arts, I mean, there's so much around engaging the community, especially through events, experiences, and obviously places. And so go ahead and carry that conversation forward into engaging the community, especially through experiences and events. Yes, definitely. Connection Americas um, involves uh, is is whether leading events or attending events or partnering with events. We have uh, many events coming up this year, especially during the summer and the Hispanic Heritage Month. So we are very uh, highlighting, of course, from September to October, mid-September to mid-October is when we have uh, um, the most robust set of events. We encourage everybody, of course, to follow up uh, Conexion Americas on our Facebook page, Twitter, um, 
and, and other platforms when we, we encourage people and inform people of what is happening. The most important event that we would like to invite everybody right now is our upcoming cafecito fundraising event. This is an online event when we hope that we can raise awareness, of course, not only about our work of Connection Americas, but the awareness of why this matter, right? We, this, why this matter as a community, why everybody should be, whether if not donating, um, just being a friend of our mission and friend of our organization. So if anybody is interested to learn more about that event that is coming is from now until May 5th is when we are promoting our Cafecito 2023. They can absolutely, like I say, follow up in Connection Americas in our Facebook page. Talk about what that means in terms of fundraising, the importance to be able to provide the foundation financially for all you do. So talk about the why, why that's so important to your efforts. Well, it's fundamental for those that are knowing the nonprofit world. Let me tell you that it is it is fundamental that people support us financially speaking. We, Connection Americas, of course, we have uh, grants from we have corporate um grants we have um support from those ends but normally for those that are not in that world normally those grants are very restricted to a particular program uh, where we of course deliver results in a very specific format and box, right? But there are a lot of things that don't fit in that world, in that box. There is a lot of administrative support that those programs need. There is, there is water, there is power, there is utilities, there is everything that involves the support of those programs that require a deliverable. So obviously when we get a grant, for a specific program, we are very focused on that program, but that program requires a lot of support and foundation to happen. Those are the unrestricted funds that are not always available, that are not always easy to get. So because of that is when we we have events like Cafecito, we have our Latino Hispanic Heritage Month Latin Party, we have individual donors, we have general asks for any financial support that people can give us and restrict it not to a program. So we have the capacity and the freedom to pay salaries and to pay the utilities to make sure that those programs run smoothly. Share a little bit of your personal vantage point in terms of the ripple effect and, and why your work is so important in the community. When you talk about diversity, inclusion, getting everyone to have a seat at the table, feeling like they're loved and supported. And when you talk about obviously the entrepreneurship side, creating businesses, creating economic development, job creation, paying taxes, there's an economic benefit obviously for the community, but also there's a social benefit. And so talk about from your personal vantage point of, of the love, the acceptance, you know, why all this work that you're doing really matters for the larger community, for us to be a more loving, kind, embraceive society. Yes, I would like to go back to the mission of Connection Americas. The mission of Connection Americas is to bring opportunities to Latino families so they can succeed, contribute. And, and that's what it is. That's what it is for us in the sense that we have a group of people that have a lot to give. We have a lot of people that have talented, that if we support them when they need um, that support, we can receive a lot as a city, as a country, in the sense of workforce, talent, as well as, um, like you say, financial, right? We, we, we pay taxes. We are Latino families disregarding their status, pay taxes. So we are contributing financially to, to our 
country, as well as we have a huge potential, we do it right now to contribute back. So when we think about macro enterprise, we have a lot of Latino entrepreneurs that are already creating jobs, that are already fulfilling those needs of, of employment within the city and within the country. So it is important to understand that they are, we are here, we are here in different stages, right? There are many members of our community that are ahead in their integration. They don't need Connection America services anymore. And that's the goal of our organization is that people do not need us because they are fully integrated. They speak um, the language. They are driven financially, mentally, um, with their lives. So they don't need programs like Connection Americas or any other social services. But what happened with those that, yes, need us? That's when we as a society, we as a city, we cannot just look away and think like they don't exist because they exist. We exist. We are here. And then because of that, instead of avoiding the situation, we need to address it and understand that this is a group of people that have a lot to give. And otherwise, if we don't give, if we don't open our doors and have those programs and have those conversations, we are just perpetrating a, a, um, a issue that can become bigger and come back um, and bite us, right? In the sense that we as a society, we are not moving forward together. And, and that's what we Connection Americas believe that we need to be the voice at the table. We need to have those conversations so we all can address issues that affect anybody disregarding where we are coming from. When we talk about discrimination and equality, that happens not only for immigrant groups, that happens for low-income families, for all groups of, of color, for groups of LGBT, anybody that is not necessarily seen from one lens and one point of view. Well, and it goes back to just like you said, we need to move forward together. And so I, I think that's a very important piece, just like you mentioned. Give me one more thing that you wish everyone knew about Connexion Americas. Uh, that we are a 20-year-old um, organization with a very important, robust reputation. We have been serving the city um, in a amazing, um, high quality for over the years. We believe that we are fulfilling a huge need in the city for inclusivity, for, for diversity, for jo social justice. And I hope that anybody that doesn't know or would like to know more about Connection Americas can reach out to us because we would love to have you at us as a friend. We would love to include you into our programs. And of course, um, like you say, include you in our walk together towards a better city and a better society. Absolutely. Well, the last question is the easy one. Where do we go to learn more and get involved? So website, social media, where do we go? Yes, please visit us in our website, conexionamericas.org or Facebook, Conexion Americas. You can also find us in Twitter. So that's when you can absolutely learn more about us. Also, you can visit us in person at Casa as a Friend. We are located on 21. 95 Nolensville Pike. We are between the fairgrounds and 440. It's a beautiful, wide, big building with a lot of art around us. So if you step by, we also would love to see people. We have the best coffee in town. Um, a lot of amazing, friendly smiles at our building. I love it. The website again, C-O-N-E-X-I-O-N Americas.org. So that makes it easy. So Martha, thank you for all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, no, thank you for the invitation. I really enjoy having this opportunity. So thank you and have a great day.